to the Innovations and Internationalization session, Genieta College and Autonomous University of Chiapas, Mexico COIL presentation. My name is Dr. Jana Jaffa, Director of International Student and Scholar Services in the Center for International Education at Genieta College. And I'm honored to co-present with my colleague here, Dr. Alejandro Alperan, Professor and Researcher at the Instituto de Investigaciones Jurídicas at the Autonomous University of Chiapas, Mexico. We would like to thank the IAH conference organizers for the opportunity to present today and to recognize our colleagues who have contributed to the work featured in this presentation. Today we will focus on a COIL partnership between the Politics Department at Junietta College and the Legal Research Institute at UNACH, which was developed to one, simulate a study abroad experience, two, develop knowledge and awareness of migration and its implications, and three, enhance cultural knowledge and perception. The course and project provided important lessons for the organizers about the difficulties of assessing the effectiveness of international collaboration. First, we would like to provide some institutional context. Junietta College is a private arts college in central Pennsylvania with an enrollment of approximately 1,300 students. Each year, approximately 400 undergraduate students study abroad and 150 international students from 40 countries study at the college. UNOC is a public university in the state of Chiapas, Mexico with an enrollment of 22,000. UNOC um, includes IAJ, which is a department located within the university and has an enrollment of 350 students. We welcome you to visit the following websites for more information. According to Student Coil, Collaborative Online International Learning, or COIL, is an approach that connects professors and students from across cultures to collaborate and learn together. When thinking about the internationalization of higher education, COIL has been an emerging area of scholarship over the last few decades and can take many forms, such as COIL courses, international projects or research, guest lectures, etc., with the intention of providing stakeholders with an impactful intercultural experience within their course of study. Some outcomes at the institutional level may include intercultural learning, equity, diversity, inclusion, greater mobility for faculty student exchange development of global engagement in the curriculum assessment and increased access to research and publications, thinking about research centers and peripheries. A COIL pilot started at Junietta College in spring 2021, led by Caitlin Murphy, former Dean of International Education. During this time, with the approval of the purpose, the Dean applied for a stipend to support faculty in developing COIL courses. The idea was to implement an interdisciplinary approach where students from various academic areas could connect virtually with the college's international partners around the world. As a postdoc for the Center for International Education at the time, I collaborated with a dean and faculty to create a faculty handbook um, benchmarking student coil materials. This handbook has been used in faculty trainings, workshops, and consultations in developing coil courses. Additionally, we offered faculty brown bags, where faculty could share highlights from their current projects and identify partners for future initiatives. The pilot resulted in over 10 courses shown on the previous slide. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Ferran to share more in detail about his COIL migrations course. Thank you so much, Dr. Jana Jaffa. Thank you to everybody, the organizers, and to all our colleagues that helped us develop and run this course to get here. So very quickly, an introduction to how this came about. I was able to visit Juniata College in 2021 during a Fulbright grant. And then we decided through the support of both UNACH and Juniata to run a COIL course on the um, uh, semester of uh, winter semester, right? No, not the spring, fall semester, the fall semester of 2022. So we had uh, a couple of difficulties starting up and that's uh, highlighted here on the screen. So the type of students that we had to work with Juniata has undergrads in the politics department and uh, our master's and doctorate programs are the in-person programs that we wanted to use in this program, in this project. So those are master's in law and doctorate in law students. So we see a difference in knowledge, which is not particularly bad for COIL, but we don't have a difference in class size. The average Juniata class was 18 students and the average class in our institute is five to seven students. And uh, because of administrative reasons, we had to run the, the course through a full semester. So I had, or we had to find 
students from our institution that were willing to be paired and participate as kind of an experiment or out of, uh, out of extracurricular activities. And we later saw this as part of a problem because they weren't as committed as the students that were getting a full grade out of the experience. It, it's, it's unfair of me to say that because we did have so many of the, let's say, guest students be excellent participants, but some didn't. And that, uh, that's come out in the assessment and it's one of the lessons that I'll be talking about at the end. Also the age difference in students was important. The average age in the group being in junior at 20 something young sophomores and uh, seniors and, and, and sophomores. And in the uh, UNACH we have 30 somethings, maybe even a few, a few people over 40. Um, so that created a very interesting and different mix that the type that we usually see in call. Next slide, please. So we try to design a course that will fall, run through a full semester. Our goal was trying to create a disorienting dilemma, which is a concept that we found in the literature review that Dr. Nagengas mainly performed with me. Um, the idea here is to try to simulate what happens to a student when they go abroad and they do study abroad. And when we do that, when people do that, we get cultural shock and we get forced to develop some skills and competencies. Uh, it, we used a guide out of Juniata's International Competency Guide, but I haven't highlighted that here, but that was part of uh, Caitlin and other people at the international side of Juniata helping us with this, Caitlin Murphy. Um, so the idea was to simulate study abroad and try to challenge the student's sense of comfort and create a disorienting situation, ambiguous situation, but with a explicit task that they had to complete so that they, would, they had to collaborate first between themselves as uh, the same, uh, same school and then between schools to try to produce the result that we wanted. So the activities were separated kind of in thirds, not really thirds, but somewhat. The first third of the activities, uh, the task was to create a uh, migration treaty between Mexico and the United States with the students representing the positions of each government. The first third was work between the same uh, country students, Mexicans with Mexicans, Americans with Mexicans, with Americans trying to decide what type of topics matter to each country. The second part was a first negotiation done by proxies, two delegates selected by each country, three students on each school, and they set out the final five topics that were to be included in the, in the treaty. And then the last part, which is much than a third, almost half the course, was done in work groups, smaller work groups, five groups with mixed students from Mexico and the United States, each working independently and autonomously to try to produce the details of their section of the final treaty. And then one final week at the end, we all collaborated together to try to bring it as a final document. We were very pleasantly surprised with the document they presented and they defended it uh, in front of the the faculty of both Juniata and Adunach, and it, it was a very good experience, I believe, for everybody. Can we see the next slide, please? So that's what we wanted to do and what the students had to do. Um, so what I want to talk now is about what can we learn about this? So what, we di what did we set up to do assessment of the course? So we set up two instruments, one quantitative and one qualitative, to try to gain some insights into what was happening. So we had the students take surveys at the beginning and at the end of the course, Measuring knowledge, but that's not the important part. We focused on process, not on, on, on product, but also measuring their attitudes towards collaboration against the attitudes for working with people from other countries, um, disposition to collaborate with people you don't know, that type of questions set up as Likert scales to try to find out if the course created any difference in that. The short answer to that part of the assessment is it's inconclusive. We don't have many info on that. It's probably not really something that happened. Uh, I mean, probably no out, not attitudes have uh, shifted for the students. This could be mainly, we think, due to bias. We have liberal students in the United States, liberal students in Mexico, so not much resistance against collaboration and that. So the other part is a qualitative thing that we did. So we set up the students to answer a journal, a, a, a write a short essay, one page essay during four different periods, four times periods uh, of the course with an easy prompt, general prompt, that was, uh, what are you doing right now? How are things going? And what are the difficulties or problems that you are having? Um, so it's mainly through the reading, the literature they provided. So we had 36 
something students in total each one producing a page out of that that we can get a sense of what happened to them during the course um i have to say pretty fast that one of the outcomes that we saw is that the mexican students produced much uh Oh, let's put it on the positive side. The, the American students produce much richer essays and journals um, than the Mexicans who were um, going through the motions a little bit in that part of the, of the activity. So can we see the next slide so we can see some of the results we had. So uh, as I said, the quantitative part, it's not really conclusive right now. What I wanna talk about is the qualitative. So what we saw is much frustration. Reading the journals, we see that the students were facing problems all around in three main areas. They express frustration, uh, both internal and external with the ambiguity of the course, with the difficulty in collaboration. And that means collaboration uh, amongst the, main, the same country and with the people of the other country, their peers in, in the uh, other country, but also uh, dealing with cultural differences. And we had interesting comments about differences in culture inside each school and also uh, between both countries, which is something that we didn't expect to see. Uh, but we also saw that through the journals, as they advanced in time, the feelings of ambiguity and frustration and difficulty begin to transform into comments, talking about learning, enjoying, and even appreciating the, the activities in hindsight, saying, so it was difficult, but it was something that it's profitable for us, and I liked it, and I enjoyed it. So that's sort of what we wanted to do with this idea of the dilemma, right? Next slide, please. Um, trying to emulate and simulate the process of growth and getting skills. I want to highlight a few of the quotes that we got from the journals that I think reveal what it is that happened and that we wanted to see and we well, think we saw. So I both enjoyed and disliked the freedoms which were granted to us by the professors in this course. So we've talked about or, or, or we discussed at the beginning that American students in specific, but Mexicans too, enjoy having classes where they are told what to do in order to get a grade. So when you give them an ambiguous task, like develop a treaty and come up with the fine points of it, and I just need the treaty, um, the freedom is both good and bad, as, you, as, as the quote rightly communicates. By the end of this class, I came to appreciate overcoming the language barrier. I am glad that we had to struggle through not speaking the same language. And this quote highlights a, a great amount of comments in the journals highlighting the necessity for effective communication and not just translation, but understanding each other. So that was another big uh, benefit that we saw of the course, people learning to communicate or the importance of communication at least. Finally, I did really enjoy this class and I felt that it taught me a lot about being uncomfortable, but making it work. So there's a lot of, in uncomfortableness in study abroad when people go overseas and are in new spaces or we are faced with new cultures and new dimensions, we get uncomfortable. But one of the best outcomes of those experiences is the sense of growth that we get from overcoming, just learning how to deal with the uncomfortableness of being someplace different and, and having the confidence to know that we can do that. So in a small way, simulated, the online way, we can see that it is sort of possible to reproduce a bit of that experience of being uncomfortable, but also having that be okay and get good results out of that. So what's next? What's next for us and, and for the institution in general? So for us as, as teachers, so we're going to run this course again next 2023 spring semester. We're hoping to have Dr. Jenna join us, Dr. Nagengast and my colleagues. Um, we are going to hopefully fine tune the adversarial uh, scenario of negotiation uh, revealed several difficulties when implemented. So we, we're thinking now of changing into a kind of mentoring scenario with the older stu students in Mexico trying to guide the younger students as well in an ambiguous task. Uh, we'll, we'll see to that, but uh, we have learned many different small things that we can apply and try to get a new experience and we'll see what comes out of that. And also we wanna focus on students interaction. Um, the, the work groups were great and they were very different and produced different results, but um, we'd like to see students try to interact or try to get students to interact in ways that are outside of the project. If we could get them to have a meal online while not discussing things of the project just because they can or want to, that would be one of the goals that I think we want to go through in the next iteration of the process. So I think that's it for me. Thank you, Jenna.
And we look very much forward to our continued partnership between both institutions and through our leadership support uh, to be able to provide faculty with additional resources, uh, COIL trainings and workshops. Uh, we wanna thank you so much for joining us today. Please feel free to contact us with our contact information on the right-hand side of the slide. Um, otherwise, we hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Thanks so much. Thank you.